Alrighty, talking about utilizing the new terrain awareness mode with the Matrice 300 RTK within a mapping mission. This was added with the latest firmware update as of this video on February 1st, 2021. So do need to make sure you are at least on version 02, 02, 01, 02 to utilize the feature. You can update the system easily through the health management system on the Pilot app when connected to the internet. And as you can see within the release notes for this version, that's where the terrain awareness mode for mapping missions was added, which gives us the ability to import a DSM file with ground height information. Really the benefit of this feature is when we have varying terrain, we're able to keep the aircraft at a set altitude above that terrain, maintain an accurate GSD. And then also when we are approaching that higher terrain, I can keep the drone out of harm's way by making sure it is ascending in altitude. So first off, uh, just some guidelines. If you're creating a DSM and kind of already have this process down, DSM stands for Digital Surface Model, represents our surface and any objects that are gonna be on that surface. And when we're importing our DSM file, it needs to be in the TIFF format, it needs to be 20 megabytes or smaller with spatial resolution less than 10 meters utilize WGS84 and ES EPSG code 4326 for our coordinate reference system. And then ultimately make sure to have a buffer for your DSM area. So you're able to plan the flight within the DSM area. It gets a little bit tricky and problematic if part of our flight area is within the DSM area and part of it is not. So always better to give yourself a little room for error. If you need to create a DSM, you can do that with a DJI Terra or third-party software based on a previous UAS mapping mission. In Terra, you'd create a new 2D map mission and import the images. For the output coordinate settings, select WGS84 and EPSG code 4326. Mapping scene, you want to select fruit tree and for a resolution, it would be low. Otherwise, the DSM file generated may be too large. So they seem a bit odd selecting fruit tree on there, but just the best avenue to complete that. Then after clicking on start reconstruction, there'll be an option to open the folder with the related files, go to the map folder, and then select GSD DSM .tiff. After we've created our DSM, we're gonna place that on the SD card, insert that into the remote controller. We'll go into mission flight, create a route, and then mapping. When we open up our mapping sidebar, can toggle terrain follow on, and then select DSM file. There'll be a little arrow on the right side. Click on that, and then in the top right, there's a plus button to import a new DSM file. It's gonna be from the SD card. So we'll click on that and then grab the TIFF file from our SD card. You'll get a notification, DSM file imported successfully. If you're not seeing that notification, do confirm the previous parameters that we outlined are all correct, including coordinate reference system, size, and resolution. You'll then be able to toggle the box next to the DSM file on, and that's going to auto rearrange our map focus to the area of the DSM, which is nice. You don't have to zoom out and zoom in and search for it. And then that DSM area is shown in yellow. Now within our planning parameters, not much has changed. Instead of our height relative to our takeoff point, we're just going to be setting height relative to the terrain. When you're planning your mission area, make sure as I mentioned before, it's within the DSM area. Otherwise, for the part that's outside of the DSM area, the flight height is gonna be based on height relative to takeoff point. So if we're going up a mountain, 
Don't want that altitude to change as we exit out of the area of our DSM. So make your life easier and just plan the mission inside of the DSM. The altitude of the aircraft during the flight is color coordinated with the flight lines on the map. So you can see on the bottom there with the altitude going between 433 and 493 meters, that's calculated by adding the DSM height plus the flight height over the terrain. And then you can see pink, we're at 433 meters and it goes up to the red at 493 meters. And then just an additional note for the P1, currently the smart oblique capture function cannot be enabled when terrain follow mode is enabled. When we're actually executing the mission then, we're gonna to want to make sure to utilize RTK. And we'll just show you a quick video on the next slide as well of it in action. So we can see our video starting to play here and the drone's altitude starting at 160 feet and continuing to rise. You can see the upcoming waypoints there, those blue diamonds that the drone is approaching. Utilizing a H20T here, didn't have the P1 handy, but same idea here where we can run our mapping mission, taking the photos and kind of watch the FPV view and see the upcoming waypoints. See our altitude continues to climb and as we approach this rise in terrain with a hill, mountain, whatever you wanna call it, our altitude is gonna to continue to rise to compensate for the terrain. And this is the FPV view we're watching. So it's a little bit shakier compared to the stabilized gimbal, but you can see the H20T continuing to capture data at that 90 degree angle. And our altitude is now up into the 300s compared to where we were starting at. So pretty much sums up the feature here, how you create the DSM, how you import it, and what it's gonna look like when you run a mission. Uh, one thing to note is if you plan a DSM mission beforehand, and then you come back to it, uh, you might not see the colored flight lines, but if you go to edit the mission, save it, and then play the mission, you will see the colored flight lines. Uh, either way, if you see the colored flight lines or just regular flight lines, it will still complete the mission with the proper terrain awareness there. Uh, but just one thing to note with the current firmware. So thanks.